So last class we talked about if you change the number of protons, it's a different element. If you change the number of neutrons, it's an isotope. So it's protons changing, neutrons changing. So now we're gonna talk about what if you change the number of electrons. So if I change the number of electrons, then I'm actually going to be adjusting the charge, okay? And so if I adjust the charge, then I'm gonna have some charged atoms. And so depending on how I'm adjusting the electrons, I may become more negative or more positive. Because remember, an electron is a negatively charged particle. So let's talk about what these atoms would be. So if my atom is charged in general, doesn't matter if it's positively charged or negatively charged, if it's just charged, then it's called an ion. So ions are charged particles. So ions are charged particles. Now, I may wanna be more specific in the type of ion. So see, this is ion, ion, so anions, cations. So these are two different types of ions. So I may want to be more specific. What type of charge? Is it negative or positive? So if it's negatively charged, it's an anion. If it's positively charged, it's a cation. So anions form when atoms gain electrons. And this means they are negatively charged ions. So anions, you can think of anti, think of negative. So because if I'm becoming negative, that means I have to gain more negativity, so I have to gain electrons. Cations are the opposite. This is when atoms lose electrons. Now they are positively charged ions. Now, one of the things that we talked about when we were talking about isotopes, we said that the isotope is chemically identical, meaning you don't know if you're messing with some carbon which isotope it is. Ions are different, okay? Ions are much different than the neutral. So if I have a neutral potassium atom, it's going to act very, very differently than a potassium cation, okay? So the ion is going to behave differently than the neutral. So if I were to do a reaction, the reaction is going to have different results if it's neutral or if it's an ion. Where if I did a reaction with an isotope, I wouldn't know because they would behave the same. So these are not chemically identical. All right, let's go more in detail with each. Anions, nonmetals form anions. And we will talk more about what are nonmetals, where are they on the periodic table. I just want to first introduce this to you for uh, in this chapter, and we'll get into more detail later. For each negative charge, the ion has one more electron than the neutral atom. So for example, fluorine. You could go on to the periodic table, find fluorine, it's atomic number, that's the number on the top of the symbol. Its atomic number is nine. So if the number is nine, it has nine protons. I don't have a charge, it's just an F. So it has to have, it's neutral, so it has the same number of electrons. But what if I wrote F minus? Now, instead of it being a neutral atom, now it's an anion, because it has a negative charge. It's the same element, so if it's the same element, it has to have the same number of protons. But now this has a negative. It's, so we don't write negative one. If it's just a negative, it's kind of understood that it's a negative one. If it's a negative two or negative three, sometimes you'll see two minus, like they'll put the number in front of the negative. But if it's just a negative, it's one. So I'm more negative by one. So for each negative, that's how many I will add. So I, instead of it being nine electrons, it has to be 10 electrons. So you can think about this as this is nine positives, this is 10 negatives. If you add positive nine and negative 10, you would get a negative one. 
All right, let's do another example. I have phosphorus. If you go on the periodic table, its atomic number is 15. So that means that's 15 protons. It's neutral, so that means it also has 15 electrons. Phosphorus likes to be a negative 3 anion. Same element, so it has to also have 15 protons. But now we want to know how many electrons. It's a negative 3, so it has to have 3 more negative charges, so 3 more electrons to make it then the to make it compared to the neutral. So if it's 15 protons, it would have to have 18 electrons. Okay, let's talk about the name. Anions are named by changing the ending of the name to IDE. And we're going to talk about um, naming a lot. Right now we're just going to talk about naming one element. So this is fluorine. This would be fluoride. This is phosphorus. This would be phosphide. Okay. Now you might be wondering why is this phosphorus and not phosphoride if this is fluorine. This is fluoride, okay? Um, one thing I'll tell you is that most of the time, just kind of think about what kind of sounds right um, and what's similar, okay? So just add I-D-E to the ending of the name. So fluorine, fluoride. So I'll write them on here. Uh, so fluorine, fluoride, okay? And then phosphorus, phosphide. You could do oxygen, oxide, etc. So just add IDE. All right, so let's do cations. So if non-metals like to be anions, then metals are gonna be cations. So metals form cations. Kind of think of the opposite. So for each positive charge, the ion has one less electron. We cannot change and say, oh, well, if it's more positive, let's add protons. Because if we add protons, we've changed what, the, what it is. It's changing the element, okay? The number of protons determines the element. So if it's still the same element, but I'm just changing its charge, the only thing I can do is change electrons. And if electrons are negative, I want to become more positive, I have to lose electrons. So for each positive charge, the ion has one less electron than the neutral atom. Okay, so let me give you some examples. So Na is sodium, so if you go on the periodic table and you look up sodium, right above the Na is the atomic number 11. So that means it has 11 protons. And right now it's written neutral, so that means it has 11 electrons. But what if I write Na plus? Still Na, so same number of protons. But now I have to change, it's a positive. So that means it has to have one less electrons. Instead of 11, it's going to have 10 electrons. So you can only mess with the electrons. Ca, calcium, has 20 protons. Since it's neutral, it also has 20 electrons. Calcium likes to be a 2 plus, and we'll talk about how do I know that later chapters. So it has 20 protons because it's still calcium. But since it's a like plus 2, it has to have 2 less than the neutral. So if the neutral is 20, he's going to have 18. All right, let's talk about naming. Cations are named by the same name as the metal. So, oh, sorry, plus the word iron. So this one's much more tricky. 
So if this is sodium, this is sodium ion. This is calcium, this is calcium ion. So when I say it, it's much more tricky, it was a joke. So just the metal name and then the word ion. That's it. All right. So we talked about if you change the number of protons, then it's a different atom. If you change the number of neutrons, it's an isotope. If you change the number of electrons, then it's an ion, either, yeah, sorry. I don't know if I said that correctly the first time. Let me restate that, because I think I said it wrong. Um, change the number of protons, you change the element. Change the number of neutrons, you make it an isotope. Change the number of electrons, you make it a ion. If you change the number of electrons by adding more electrons, it's an anion. If you remove electrons, it's a cation. Okay, so those are the three different ways you can affect things. So now we're gonna change gears. So now we've talked about the three subatomic um, atoms or particles. So now we're gonna talk about when we looked at the periodic table, you have the symbol, you have the atomic number, and then at the bottom you have the mass number. Now we're gonna get into more detail about that number.